Big thanks to Arm & Hammer Baking Soda for sponsoring this video. Safety, number one priority. If you take Arm & Hammer Baking Soda and you mix it with vinegar, you get this really cool fizzing oh reaction. <laughs> the fizzing is caused by carbon dioxide being released from the reaction. And to prove there's CO2 in this beaker, I'm gonna light this match and put it down inside. Boom. The CO2 that was built up from that reaction is heavier than the oxygen in the air, and it pushes it right out of the beaker. And with no oxygen, there can be no combustion, and the fire goes right out. Now, if I take a balloon and I put it over a two liter bottle and do the same reaction, this happens. Oh boy. Okay, so as you can see, there is a lot of CO2 that comes out of this reaction. So let's use this CO2 to build ourselves a baking soda rocket. Here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna tape some of these wooden popsicle sticks on the side of our two liter bottle. Then we're gonna put some Arm & Hammer baking soda inside this tea bag we emptied out. We've calculated that 42 grams is the optimal amount. Boom. Next, we're gonna pour in some vinegar and let this tea bag hang on the inside of the bottle squeezed in between this rubber cork. You can use other corks for this experiment. We've just found that this one holds the pressure the best. The very last step is you shake up the bottle so you mix the Arm & Hammer baking soda and vinegar together, then flip the bottle upside down. Oh my God! Oh. <laughs> that probably went 40 to 50 feet in the air. That was a super success. So what we saw there was CO2 building pressure in the bottle. At a certain point, it forced out the cork, creating jet propulsion. Now, while we got this to go straight up, in one of our earlier tests, we actually knocked the bottle over on accident and it took off on the ground super fast. It was actually a spectacular accident. So this got me thinking, how far could we actually get these rockets to go sideways? To achieve this, we're building what we're calling the Soda Rocket Launch Pad. This build consists of two PVC pipes fastened to eight foot two by fours built in a U shape. The bottle rests in between the pipes and when it builds pressure, it pushes against our base plate and takes off. We will also have an adjustable four foot hinge leg that lets us change the angle of attack. We did this so that we could dial in the right setup to achieve the furthest horizontal distance. Oh my gosh. Oh! Oh! <laughs> All right, we're gonna take this to a local park and see how far we can get these baking soda rockets to go. Oh. Hmm. That was amazing. I feel like it got actually a little too vertical and then the wind kind of took it. So we're actually gonna reduce the angle of attack on this one and see how far we can go. <laughs> that was so good. There was very little wind, it stayed straight. I think we have found that the, the best way to use the launch pad is to have it at the lowest angle of attack. So we're gonna go with 85 feet. Call well, it 85. 85 feet with the soda rocket launch pad. All right, so in this one, we're gonna see if we can play a little football and if Seaton can catch this. for me to catch up to it. Wow. That was incredible. I was so impressed to see how far this little two liter went, but I wanna see if we can go bigger and use a five gallon container. But if we do that, that means we have to build a bigger launch pad. We built our bigger soda rocket launch pad by attaching two 10 foot PVC pipes to two 10 foot two by fours. We then made them into a U shape by attaching them with one foot pieces of wood. Lastly, we added a larger base plate and a five foot tall hinged leg, just like the smaller version. Now because this container is 9.5 times larger than the two liter, so for that reason we're gonna scale the reactants. That means we're gonna use 400 grams of Arm & Hammer baking soda and 4.75 liters of vinegar. We've also added these dowel rods as legs which are much larger than the popsicle sticks. And we're gonna be using a potato for our plug because we know that potatoes do a really good job at holding pressure. Safety, number one priority. And before we set up the larger soda rocket launch pad, we wanted to test the five gallon container to make sure the scaled up version worked as planned. We're gonna use the same strings as we did for the two liter, but I've measured out 10 bags that have 40 grams of baking soda each in them. That's perfect. Everything hinges on the strength of these pieces of tape and string. Last one. Okay. 
Here we go. so big. We're gonna follow the trail of baking soda and vinegar. It was smooth, it had great jet propulsion, it flew through the air, we recaptured the container. Just awesome. All right, so we have the soda rocket launch pad in place, and uh, for this test, it's all about the horizontal distance. So we're gonna see how far we can get our supersized soda rocket. Oh, that went so far though! <laughs> Officially wearing the science experiment, essentially what happened is we had one of the bags, one of the 10, fall in there. So it already started creating pressure. And then when I shook it up, the pressure was already ready to shoot the potato out. And so then when we finally got it to go, it basically did it right where I was standing. All right, we're gonna measure this out. Here we go. 99 <laughs> feet. All right, 99 feet, that was really great. We're gonna try one more time and see what happens. Nah, put your weight into it, just don't break the thing. Okay. Good. Yes! By far the best one. That was so good. I'm almost Sure, we beat the 99 feet. Official measuring tape of the soda rocket launching committee. Good boom. We'll go nine. 109! All right. <laughs> <laughs> it really set this thing really far. If you look out there in the distance, you can see it. This little rocket is the rocket that could, it did. Our results basically showed that this experiment does scale very well and that the optimal cork is in fact a potato of all things. I thought the launch pad worked so well. It was so cool to see these things zinging through the air. And because it's Halloween time, and I thought it'd be fun to get in the Halloween spirit, we're gonna turn one of these jumbo-sized soda rockets into a ghost rocket. Here's how we're going to ghostify this soda rocket. We're gonna turn it upside down like this. Then we're going to place the dome up top. We're gonna tape that. Then we're gonna use this sheet right here and we're gonna dress that over top of this like a ghost. We're gonna paint a little face on it. Ooh. Then we're gonna use this green dye to put inside with the vinegar, and then it's gonna be like, kind of like slime and a ghost, and it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> so, here's what we learned. Uh, really hard to put this foam bottom on here and then force a potato up through the top here as the plug. We're just gonna lose the dome and it's just gonna be a flat-headed ghost. Um, that's just how it's gonna have to be. And so I'm confident that we can make it work. I think that the green's gonna look really cool. So ghost rocket, take two. me it was a ghost that's what they do it was a success <laughs> okay there we go we showed you how to make an arm and hammer baking soda rocket with a two liter bottle we got ours to go 85 feet horizontally we then supersized this experiment and created a giant baking soda rocket and got it to go 109 feet horizontally thanks again to arm and hammer baking soda for sponsoring this video let us know in the comment section what else we could do with these rockets if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button and we'll see you really soon Ho, 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 ho,